What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Speed Bumps Live, Friday, August 14th. And you know what? It's uh, pretty decent weather here in Atlanta. What's going on, Paul? Hey, the weather. The it's <laughs> not burning my skin off. That's, that's what's going on. It's a little overcast uh, for anybody that's not in Atlanta, and it's, uh, it's feeling all right. Yeah, it's, it's not, not too shabby, man. How I'll are you, Hoff? Man, you know, I'll tell you, um, it's, you know, again, I always talk about how weird it is that we're in August. I feel like it still should be April and the weather should be cooler, but it's really hot. So it's just, I'm, I'm at the point now, man, it's like a weird groundhogish feeling, but hey, you know what? Every day above ground is a good day. So uh, that's right. It's, it's a good time to be here. So uh, thanks to everyone that's uh, joining us for the first time. Uh, you know, Speed Bumps Live is a weekly web show that discusses marketing challenges and opportunities with amazing leaders from all types of different industries. Uh, I'm Javier Santana, if you don't know me yet. And I'm Paul Carpenter. And before we get going and introducing our guest today, do want to take a second to let you know that while the chat feature is off, we do like and we actually love your questions. So uh, we do have the Q&A, the little button down there at the bottom. So go ahead as we're, as we're going through our conversation here today with Mark. Um, Please make sure you ask questions along the way. Um, it's only better when you all are asking questions and it's not just Hav and I talking. Also, I will say this, forgive any kind of hiccups along the way. Next week, we should have one of our guest moderators back, Jen Erdman, who joined us in season one. So I'm gonna do my best to go in and moderate some of these questions, uh, read them, uh, hopefully I do justice. So. Hop, go ahead and uh, you, you do well, we man. Got. You do well. No, no, no. All it's right. awful. It's so awful. Uh, today, today's guest is Mark Argyle. Um, he's director of product mark product management and marketing at iVision. Uh, mark is an experienced executive advisor. Uh, he's a strategic marketing professional. Uh, he's an awesome sales leader with a crazy track record uh, building business processes, programs, product lines, relationships, biz dev, um, all in the IT space. Um, he's responsible for mapping iVision's hybrid IT production roadmap, um, and they're ensuring the development of testing products, services that can successfully be messaged to target consumers in an omni-channel marketing, right? So I know Mark uh, because we serve on the same board for Inspired You, which is a local nonprofit, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But uh, Mark, join us. Thank you so much for taking the time to, uh, to be with us today. You look awesome. What's up? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Glad to be here, man. I'm, I'm honored, so appreciate it. That's awesome. Um, well, yeah, so like I mentioned, you know, I, I met Mark probably about, yeah, it's been uh, some months ago, right? Like maybe right. Called six months. And, uh, and we had a couple of conversations, like briefly, and I was like, I got to talk to this guy on the show. And I remember mentioning it to Paul, and I think I hounded him for a little bit. Hey, Mark, what's up? You want to be on the show? You want to be on the show? <laughs> and eventually he gave in. So it was a lot of arm twisting. But uh <laughs> But let's say this, let's, let's, let's dive right in. Let's talk a little bit about your background, your career journey. Um, you're in a completely different industry than, than what we typically tackle, right? And uh, you were actually in a completely different industry before you transitioned to technology, went from sales to marketing and, and you bounced back and now you found a place where you feel super confident, comfortable, and you're doing amazing things. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely, Javier. So uh, first, again, thank you guys for letting me be here. Although I missed last week's episode, so I had to go back and watch it last night. Awesome. And after watching Jennifer Roger Givens, I don't know if I really wanted to be on this week, right? <laughs> she killed it. Right? Jennifer was amazing. Yeah. She's going to take my role too. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So like after watching, you know, watching her episode and listening to her story, I was like, wow. Right. Like, so I felt like at, in high school, she had her act together, knew kind of what she wanted to do. Right. So. My story is a lot different than that, right? So it was like, <laughs> you, you, you know, you're talking about a traditional, you know, kid growing up, high school, what are you going to do next kind of thing. So, you know, uh, back in the earlier days, I thought kind of like I was going to save the world, right? So I was in uh, undergrad environmental management econ, and I kind of went that path for, uh, for a few years before uh, a good friend of mine just kind of uh, like, noticed I guess like he's like there's a salesperson inside of there right and right. you're technical so he's like you get it so he um you know helped me out open the door to a, a whole new world so I ended up uh, starting with a bell south and, uh, 
you know, uh, telecommunications. And so when I started with Bell South, I'll say this, like, uh, I can't say this for like a lot of companies today, but back then it was crazy. Bell South, you know, they had their own training centers, everything. So you could come in like me with a chemistry background, right? And they taught you everything you needed to know about IT or telecommunications. And so it was great training, great foundation. And so uh, that's kind of how I got my start. What year, what year was that, Mark? Because that's kind of like at the cusp of technology really booming, right? Like that's really when we kind of got to the point where, where it was pre-dot bomb, but where everything yes. was just moving, 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 right? Right. So barely, so you yeah, have a funny story about that, but yeah, barely pre-dot-com, right? So it was 98. So it was when I got in. And to your point, um, back at that time, like they, uh, they didn't let us on the, like you didn't have a module, so you didn't have a set of accounts when you first started, but they had this demand line and this demand line, people would call in and it was crazy. People would ask for, uh, for those who know about networks, T1s, right? Which right. now is nothing. But at the time, it was a lot of, you know, 1.5 megs. It was everything back then. Absolutely. People were ordering these. These things were over $1,000 a month. And people were ordering these things in their garage. Yeah, but you and needed your AOL.com. And you needed yes. your AOL mail, bro. <laughs> exactly. Everybody was trying to be a startup, right? So, and then seriously, they were doing it in their, their garage and everything. So, you know, I kind of got my start there. So, again, I have that buddy to thank for, for spotting, you know, a salesperson kind of. In, in hiding, I guess, or in waiting or whatever. So he helped me on that journey. I got started, started in sales, and then kind of realized that, hey, I, I, I understand this, and I seem to be a little bit more technical than others, right? So then I was looking for, like, what's the next opportunity? So, right. you know, if you look at kind of LinkedIn, my journey, I kind of got deeper and deeper into technology. So I went from being a salesperson to an engineer to some sort of a technical solution seller, on and on back in, in AT and in Bell South, I'm sorry. Then we got uh, the AT and T deal happened. We became part of AT and T. My journey kind of continued the same way, and then um, it got to a point where I'd already, you know, AT and T was a telecommunications and mobility company at this time because mobility was booming. Was singular, um, you know, because singular right. uh, remember that. came to, uh, you know, it came startup and it was based out of Atlanta. So you had mobility, you had networking. So I was trying to figure out what was next. It ended up going into something completely different. It ended up going into cloud. So uh, AT&T, for those who don't know, when, when Amazon started, AT&T also started a cloud business. And I ended up doing that, hosting some other stuff, still with connections into mobility and networking. You, at AT&T, you never lose that, right? So. But anyways, again, I was trying to figure out what was next. So ended up going to get my MBA uh, from Emory, I did the executive program. And uh, one of the people in my program was uh, Gary our my CEO now at Isaac. And after we finished our MBAs, you know, it's kind of, you know, talking to, uh, you know, classmates and just talking to other people in the industry, just my network, right? And right. trying to figure out again, what was next, what made the most sense. And then, it's funny. I'm sitting there at breakfast with Gabe, and Gabe like looked across the table from me. You know what? Because I just really went to him just because she was part of my network and a sounding board. And he was like, "I think I want you to come work at I." So ended up coming to work at iVision, and um, again I was in sales and um, with AT and T, and then moved over into a product role, and then that journey kind of unfolded from there. So. Yeah. And, and there's uh, steps along the way that led me, led me to that. And um, um, you want to take it over, Javi? I'm digging it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's that's that's, that's, no, that's yeah. interesting because so one one of the things I want to call out real quick, right? It's because you went from sales when when you work on the sales side, and I worked on it for a very uh, short period of time. I told you I was a, a technical sales engineer on right. on the network side with a couple of great companies, and I learned a lot from some pretty amazing sales guys. But I also understood the marketing struggles. Uh, when you're on that sales, on the sales, when you're out there trying to talk to people and trying to get right. them to understand your solutions, there's also this like the gap, right? Um, so the sales and marketing alignment, sales and marketing alignment itself is something that, that we have gotten so much better at doing, but, uh, and we'll go a little bit more into that, but, but it's really great to hear your story coming from sales and then into product marketing because there's just so much of your previous experience that you can bring into this role, which makes a lot of sense why you've been so successful at it. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, and I, I actually, I want to talk about how deep you go, because you talked about that earlier. Um, you've been basically, you were at Bell South and AT&T for how many years? I was there for 13 and a half years, almost 14. Wow. Yeah. Okay, and you've been with iVision now for seven or eight years, is that right? Eight and a half, yeah. Eight and a half years. <laughs> right. Okay, so you've been at these places for a long time, and, and you almost don't hear that anymore. Right. Um, but tell us a little bit how you keep going and diving deeper and deeper when you've been with a company for so long. How do you keep yourself kind of almost motivated or challenged or seek new opportunities as you're navigating through um, a particular company like that? Oh, absolutely. So it's, it's funny, um, really quick, like, so it kind of goes back to childhood, right? I was that kid, they would break toys and figure out how to put them back together. And until I met like the Tonka toys, I actually stuck one under my dad's truck tire to get it open because I couldn't break it open, you know, like that, because they were talking about how tough Tonkas were. So it kind of, I was always like a tinkerer, right? So I always wanted to know like what was next, like what was behind the curtain, so to speak. So when I was in sales, what intrigued me were like different technologies. I'd want to know more. So I started with, I would talk to the solutions engineer. I would talk to the architect, whoever it was to learn more and understand what they just kind of like where they got their knowledge from. Right. And then I just found that I backed into those jobs just because I became more technical again than a traditional AE. Cause it's, it's funny. Uh, 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 one of the, uh, like back when I first started with Bell South, one of the senior reps, he said something I'll never forget. He was like, you know, he was very, very successful AE. And he said, as an AE, you sell the sizzle. You let the engineers sell the steak. And so yeah. <laughs> it kind of resonated with me, right? And so, but I found that I was, mo I was more interested in the steak than the sizzle. And so I started, again, I started, I wanted to get more technical and, and hobby. We had a discussion about this, like, I was actually an AE and I got my CCNA. And, and yeah. because again, it was networking and I wanted to know more. So I found that I had that, you know, that technical drive again to cities. And so like, how do you find like what's next? I found that at a company like Bell South and AT&T, you had opportunities in emerging products. So like, for example, when MPLS first came out, right? There was opportunities in that you know for that networking um and that first evolved and you know you had the internet and then they had uh remember psl which is i'm really aging myself right now but DSL <laughs> came out, right and those products right there i literally i was a i was like a, a sales engineer so i was a salesperson and i was helping people install dsl over the phone because it was just quicker to do that and to sell them something else than to you know, I fix their problem, right? So it's like, what's going on? So I earned that, you know, I earned that client. So I would help yeah. them out. And then they would always come back to me and I could sell them other things. And what ended up happening is, uh, I, again, I started finding from a marketing standpoint, I started finding that the messaging wasn't, you know, accurate a lot of times. And at and mm -hmm. you know, Bell South, they're like, you know, a cruise ship versus a speedboat. So by the time you try to go to marketing and get something changed, it's easier to do it yourself. And I, fortunately back then, you know, I was able to, you know, get Adobe and be able to edit those PDFs that we had. And I could, you know, tweak them to my audience, right? My, whether I was in, you know, mid-market enterprise, it didn't matter what my client base was. I was able to tweak that messaging. And I ended up finding a lot of success doing that so much so that it led to uh, promotions. It also led to me training other parts of the organization because again, I would crack that code before a lot of other people. And so leadership was you know, curious, like how did, how did you figure this out? Right, that, right. I think that marketing sort of gene or whatever was kind of always there. And then you know, when I went to grad school at, um, at Emory, it ended up being one of my concentrations. Well, that's, you know, what's funny is I've talked about, uh, you've talked about this word a couple of times. And for anybody that knows me, I, I kind of dig in on a word. Uh, I'm a, it's like a keyword and curiosity. So going back to the Tonka truck, right? You were curious, right. how do I open this damn thing? Uh, every good marketer has to be curious. 
And so I think you said it there a second ago, you had that gene, you had that marketing gene <laughs> and then already in you, you are with the curiosity. So um, this isn't a question or anything like that, but it's just more of a statement of, I love that you've used that word because I think it's extremely important for anybody on the line that is uh, either in marketing or tired of marketing or trying to figure out, sometimes it's just go back to the basics and be curious. Yeah, it's interesting. You, you're right. Uh, and, and it is. And again, that's why I kind of referenced that Tonka truck when I was a kid, right? Because to your point, and I think that's how, again, I got all the promotions that I got, you know, when I was at uh, Bell South and AT&T is because I would take that initiative, that curiosity would drive me to taking that initiative. And I'm figuring out, okay, how do I sell this solution? Like, this is something new that they obviously want us to sell. They're pushing us to sell. How do I crack that code? How do I you know, find that target market. And again, you know, I found that I was, you know, customizing PDFs and, you know, doing different things, changing my messaging, you know, when you talk typical to typical sales. Yes. It was all the basic <laughs> marketing stuff that I, I didn't know the names of it at the time, you know, yeah. but again, it was all this, the basic marketing, the foundation was there. And again, you know, I go, I go on to school and then I realized while I'm in school, Hey, I was doing a lot of this stuff already, you know, Sell. Yeah, so. the, the accidental marketer of sorts, and I'll tell you, it's funny. Because, <laughs> exactly. Uh, the fact that you were like hacking PDFs, man, it's uh, I, I I get it, right? I was there too, right? It's one of those things where if you only take the tools that they give you and say, all right, well, I guess this is all I got to work with, then that's not a recipe for success. You have to take the foundation of that and say, okay, what what else can I do with this? So right. you did an awesome job with that. But I will say that that dovetails a little bit into uh, into something else I want to talk about because when you're hacking those PDFs or those collateral and you're tailoring it to, uh, to an IT audience, IT audience is not like a general audience. IT audience, they don't live in the gray. It's very black or white. It's very like, hey, don't come over here with BS and fluff. Like, give it to me straight. Um, and, you know, it's like walking out on your first uh, first time on stage at a comedy club, you have the ability to bomb terribly because they will call you out, right? So how did you deal with that? How did you, uh, what was your approach and your strategy for dealing with that audience specifically? So so you're spot on, as you know, obviously, like when you're, when you're selling to a CIO, it's much different. You're, you're talking more about business goals, right? Business drivers that, you know, again, that, that are more aligned to the business. When you're, when you're, when you get down below that and you are marketing to, you know, IT directors, senior managers, engineers, it gets technical, right? So you definitely have to have your ducks in a row when you go and present to them or you're right, they'll, they'll chew you up and, and spit you out. Uh, a little, a little funny story. It was a huge deal, right? And it was, um, it was this, uh, it was a co-location deal. And, um, the, you know, we put everything together and it wasn't me. I just happened to be in the meeting and this engineer came in and walked in and, and laid this diagram down. And he's like, as you can see, everything is fully redundant. And on the client side, I mean, it was almost immediately, as soon as the paper hit the table, the engineer on the client got, side goes, there's a single point of failure right there. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> and you can just see like the, Everybody went quiet, right? The room just went quiet. And while the true infrastructure was redundant, that no diagram that that guy did, he did make a mistake on it. And that in that client engineer spotted that thing so quickly. So to your point, yeah, you, they will, they will, you know, you'll be thrown to the wolves if you if you make a mistake. So you really, again, with your messaging, you have it has to be tailored, right? It has to be targeted towards the right audience. And when you are talking to engineers and consultants, you can't have that fluff. It's, it's all business, right? And again, you have to partner with uh, reputable partners like we do at iVision, you know, like dealing with best of breed um, partners like Cisco, you know, VMware, you, you have to do that because again, in NetApp, if you don't, they, they're going to call you out and you need to, and again, when you're, when you're in those meetings, and that's one thing that I'm, I'm thankful for at iVision, we have, such great consultants and engineers that um, those guys help us from a marketing standpoint on the technical side. I'll say this one, one thing that I learned and I learned this early on with being 
uh, you know, a good leader, it's always having a great team, right? You, you don't be intimidated by having people that are smarter than you, better than you in your network and around you. Don't be intimidated by that. You want that, right? And so from, to your point, probably from a technical standpoint, it's pulling in those resources to make sure from a marketing standpoint, we're hitting this correctly, right? And our messaging is not bluff. And we're talking, you know, about factual things that we can solve for this client. Um, so I'm the fluff guy. <laughs> so I think, I think, you know, out of, out of the three of us, I'm looking at really two gentlemen that are IT oriented and very technical and understand all of that. And I'm the fluff guy who is dangerous enough to, to understand but I'm, a, I'm also a storyteller. And so tell me a little bit how you navigate between, and I know there's, you can't have BS, but at the same time, you are in a marketing role in which marketing um, does have roots in just really solid storytelling. So can you talk about how you tell stories? Absolutely. So, um, and that's another great point, Paul. So I think, what we do, one of the things that, I, you know, and I, I helped to introduce this at, at iVision because I learned this early on is leveraging your customer base, right? So those, those clients that are loyal to you, right? It's listening to them. So uh, again, when I, I think one of the best things, like if I had to, if I had to list one attribute, that was probably one of my best attributes as a salesperson or as a marketer it didn't matter as a solution seller is listening to the client. Like you're not going to see me go in a meeting and run my mouth for the 30 minutes hour that I have this person's time. I'm going to ask open-ended questions and get them to talk. And so I think part of telling that story is you need to understand what the client is looking for, what the customer is looking for. And you're only going to understand that by talking to them, right? Having that conversation. And again, I think that's one of the things that at Ivy's we have these, uh, we call them forum CIO forums. So I get to hear firsthand from our CIOs the things that are working, the things that aren't working, where the needs are. And again, it's working with, you know, best of breed partners to coming together mm -hmm. and again, you know, um, leveraging that messaging. Like, I, you know, of course, you always pay attention to your competitors. So I don't, you know, once you think I don't look at competitors' websites or look at what competitors are doing in the marketplace, absolutely do. But I think it's more important to me or just as important that you work with your partner and you understand and align your strategic goals with your partner's strategic goals and align that messaging, right? So if again, for example, something that Cisco is a strategic goal for Cisco um, as a partner, I want to align that with iVision and what we're doing, right? And so again, and then again, build, putting the customer into that mix is how you tell that story because I'm understanding the pains that the client is going through, right? And then understanding those pains, understanding their journey and helping them with that solution allows me to then tell that story to the next client or the next right. client. Right. Hey, what? This, these are the pains that, you know, we feel you could potentially be, you know, again, you know, something you talked about, making it emotional, right? Mm, exactly. Like on the emotional aspect, right? So you want to, you know, let that client know you can help them so they can sleep well at night, you know, and by doing these things, you know, you know, it's a need that they have. And you know that again, that this is a, an opportunity for you to help them and allow them to focus on, you know, the company's business goals and strategic goals. What makes, um, it's super interesting. What makes iVision, you, you mentioned competitors and I love the fact that you really align yourself with your partners um, versus, you know, seeing what your competitors are doing and then trying to, you know, be copycat syndrome in a way. Um, what differentiates, what makes iVision different from their competitors? Because so, this has to be part of the, This has to be part of your marketing story, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and again, I think what makes iVision different is the reason I am at iVision, right? So, after uh, talking to Gabe, our CEO, you know, David, our president, and understanding their passions and why they formed this company, right? They formed this company, it was out of the heart. It was out of, it was to deliver something better for the client, a better client experience, 
you know, a better solution for our clients. And when you, when you boil it all down, it's the culture, right? It's the, it's, it's, it goes from the CEO, Gabe, the president, David, all the way down, you know, throughout our company. It's, you know, everyone looking out for one another. It's everyone stacking hands. And again, to provide that white glove experience for, for our clients. It was amazing to me, you know, to talk to, to Gabe when I first started and to understand, you know, the retention level of the clients, how, you know, when people become high vision clients, they don't leave. They just, we just get further entrenched into those, those, those uh, accounts, right? And again, it's because we are there for the long haul. We're not going to try to sell someone a solution, you know, for the here and now just to, to, to make a quick buck, right? It's all about earning that client for life. And I think when you dig deeper into it, some of the things that drive that, like we have our client engagement values that we live by every day. So every person in our company, we have this lanyard that has these eight client engagement values on of how we engage with the client. Like, you know, we earn clients for life every day. And um, uh, just go, again, there's eight of those that we, that we have. And they're all tailored specifically towards our clients. Then, you know, we have our, our core values. One of the ones that really stands out to me is humility, right? Like, I feel like that's a big one in our company. You won't see people in our company trying to, um, they don't want to get all the accolades, right? They just want to help the client and, and, you know, get the solution solved. And, you know, I was talking about this when we spoke earlier in the week. One of the things that blows me away, like we do conferences, you know, from a marketing standpoint, you have the booth, you know, you have the swag, people coming by, you know, you're, you know, you're pitching your product and, you know, so, so uh, my team is doing that. And it's amazing to me, every single time we do that, there inevitably somebody will walk up and call out one of our consultants or engineers or solution architects and just talk about how wonderful that person is, what they did for them and their company. And again, you want to, you know, you, you want to get to that point and you, you know, we talked about this too, again, I'm dating myself, but remember that saying that no one got fired for hiring IBM, IBM. right? <laughs> Same thing. I feel like with iVision, right? You, you want to get to that comfort level where these CIOs know that you have their back, right? And they're not going to get fired for hiring you because you are going to do everything in their interest and the company's interest first. That's first and foremost. You know what? What's sorry, Hav. I know you. I know you're burnt. You've got no, no, do it, do it. I but lie. something, something. I actually started watching, and 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 I can't believe I'm this late to the uh, to the game. But Mark, do you watch Halt and Catch Fire? No, no, I haven't seen it. Uh, when you said nobody gets fired for hiring IBM, that whole the whole premise of that show is is basically <laughs> the early '80s. And, okay. And and, and uh, team going rogue, basically. It's uh yeah it's really interesting uh, might be worth checking out yeah I have to check that out yeah I'll have to put that on my list as well I'll tell you that uh you know circling back to something you said earlier which I think is a really good piece of advice um, for those that are listening is you said I don't walk into a room and start running my mouth for 30 minutes about what I do right I think that it's really important for us as marketers agencies whoever you are when you're trying to work with a client to help them solve a problem, you don't walk in a room and say, let me tell you everything that I can do. You walk in the room and say, let's talk about you. This opportunity is for us to learn about you. How can we help you? What are the issues? What are the challenges, successes? And really thinking that through. And it sounds like you guys have done a really good job of that. Um, and not to keep uh, plugging the whole situation with iVision, but you, know, you, you definitely have your hands full. And like I mentioned earlier in the show, it took us probably about a month to to align for when we can actually get you on the show right. but you but you've been with iVision for quite some time and I just want to point this out specifically because during your time there iVision has been on the Inc 5000 fastest growing companies for 7 years from 2009 2017 I'm sure you had nothing to do with that mark right <laughs> Yeah, so it's a, but it's one of those situations where you you're a busy guy there's a lot of stuff going on um you, you heard all about your journey um, yet the way that we met was through a nonprofit board. So, you know, when you look at the amount of time you're spending at work, helping grow that company, being scrappy with marketing, I mean, I could go on and on and on the list of all the things that you do. Um, you know, we met on that branding, uh, committee for inspired you and it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic organization. I definitely want to talk a little bit about what they do and what we do with it, but 
how do you find a time? How do you prioritize the time? And what's important to you to be really able to do that as a company and as Mark Argon? Right. So, so first, yeah, I'll start with the company. So, you know, this, this credit goes to our, our CEO, uh, Gabe Damian. He literally, like, he drove this from a company standpoint, and it's uh, Pledge 1%, right? We became a part of that. He was very passionate. And for those who don't know, it's where you give, you know, 1% of your profit, 1% of your company's time, and if possible, like, your product, your services, you give 1%, you know, to charity. And, and Gabe was very passionate about it. You know, awesome. from the start. And he just like his motivation inspired me, right? And so um I will say this though, from from earlier days, again, referencing childhood, like one of uh in my mom's career, one of the jobs or roles she held was a social worker. And um I'll never forget, you know, I would help her like when I wasn't in school, like during the holidays and stuff like that. And I'll never forget the impact we had on like elderly people when we were helped out with like Meals on Wheels. Yeah. So that feeling that you get, you know, helping people and they were so appreciative, right? But this, and it was a meal we're talking about. And I'm a little kid and I didn't really understand, but I just knew it felt good inside, right? To, to do mm-hmm. So I felt like it kind of originated there for me. And then again, with the initiative Gabe had, I was all for it. And so I ended up volunteering um, and, you know, uh, power my learning. And everybody was so nice. I mean, you know, Richard, Onisha, Cameron, Eddie, everybody was so nice and amazing, right? And I was like, you know, this is something that I, I kind of like. And, and as a company, we were like, and, you know, a lot of people probably don't know this, but we were like heavily involved, like re-imaging the PCs. Our, our managed services team goes there a regular kid pre-COVID and helps with the re-imaging of the machines. And that, again, was one of the, you know, organizations that we helped with. And then you know, getting to meet Richard, and I do have to thank um, John DeShazer. He He's the one who kind of set up a meeting with Richard to get me on the uh, branding committee with you, you know, like we, we had those conversations and because he knew how passionate I was about it. But I mean, who who doesn't love Richard? Man? Richard Hicks? Like, runs he's, with, uh, he's on here, by the way. So no, uh, is he? <laughs> I, I see him on there. I see his name. So, uh, so he's probably back there, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, man, I mean, Richard's amazing guy. And so right. I met him at one of the events because uh, Tracy uh, Kubizeski, who used to be Barahona, is the one who actually, you know, got our organization involved with Power of My Learning. And so, again, I met Richard at one of the um, organizations and I just shared my passion for what he was doing. And again, you know, Richard is so amazing and what he's doing is so amazing. You know, and again, for, for those that don't know, what um, what Inspired You does, you know, they they take these, you know, they get these uh, PCs, they re-image these PCs, they put learning applications on there for the kids, but they take it a step further, right? Instead of just handing these over, they actually set up workshops where they train the kids and show the kids how to use this computer and how to use the application on this computer, you know, for learning purposes, right? And then also an added bonus, parents are getting to use these, you know, and they're, again, um, you know, expanding on their education and work career and things like that. So it's like a win-win. And, you know, volunteering at the workshop was one thing, but when I went, um, and Richard invited me one weekend and I went to one of the schools and watched the kids receive the the PCs. And then I sat there and watched the training go on and like, I felt like you could see the light go off in their head. And that to me was just so rewarding that again, it's like, I'm so grateful to be a part of that. No, it's, it's an amazing organization. And I will say this, to even take a step further. These are, uh, so all the uh, computers that are um, provided to inspire you are donated from corporations. Right. Um, right. So what is obsolete to one person is a gem and a treasure to another. Um, then in the workshops, they're imaging the computers, prepping them, taking them. I've been to a workshop. Um, I've been to several and I remember like sitting there and hearing the stories. Um, I was with the Latino uh, families help us with translation. And, uh, the instructor, she said, well, tell me, why are you here? Why did you come? Why are you in the States? And these families started to start to tell their stories. And man, I was trying to be tough, but I was like, yo, there's a lot of dust in this room. Man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. 
but but one of the uh, one of the uh, stats because I met Richard in a very similar similar way. You know, he should everybody else. I was with uh, um, volunteering with ATP, and we went to an event, and it was after Inspire, and uh, during a conversation at the time, Kwame and Richard were both just having a conversation with me, and uh, he said, "Did you know, right? This is the one that I'm going to leave with you guys, uh, the audience, that private jail builders." will start looking for property to buy to start building jails based on third and fourth grade reading, writing, and math scores. And I said, that can't be true. And he says, no, that's really true. And that typically happens underprivileged, underserved communities, right? Because there's a lot of things that happen, you know, wow. when, when you have poverty stricken communities or just underserved. And I remember looking at both of them and they both had straight faces. And I was like, where do I sign up? Like it literally was, that. I was like, where do I sign up? He goes, oh, we have a workshop next week. And I said, I'll see you there. And that was it. And that right. was it. And that changed me. And that's, you know, the, the work that we're doing with uh, Inspired You and now working with you. So I wanted to drop a little bit of uh, info on that's an amazing organization. If you're in technology, marketing, IT, whatever, and you want to give back to the community, specifically in the Metro Atlanta area, uh, visit IUATL.org. Awesome opportunity. How to drop that nugget in there. But uh, I, love I love it. Yeah. yeah. But we do have some uh, questions from the audience. Paul, do you want to go ahead? Yeah. Now it looks like we're at right at 1237. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, first off, great stories too about Inspired You. That's, it's, that's pretty incredible and it's definitely needed since a lot of kids are going back to school here and they may, a lot of them don't have computers. So, well, and now post-COVID uh, where everything is- that's, uh, It has to be at home. Right so yeah, now. massive. Yeah, so- uh, keep up the great work, Hav and Mark. I think that's pretty amazing. Um, on the subject of COVID, how are you, as a marketer, you talked about conferences, trade shows, and all of that. How are you now engaging clients virtually, uh, given the lack of travel? Great question, right? So, well, that one's from David Hogan, by the way. Uh, all right, I know him. I know all him. All right, That's all right. right. He, those, so those old Bell South stories, he, he knows all. He was there with me. So, uh, yeah, he's a sharp guy. So, um, he, man, it was literally, I felt like it was, again, thankful that iVision is more a speedboat than a cruise ship, right? So we had to, like, it was literally like turning on a dime. Like, we had to go cancel all of our events because we were more uh, events focused company, right? Because um, um, again, I call something that I'll touch on a, a friend of ours that we have in common, Prance. I want to share a story <laughs> about how we, we got to where we ended up marketing. Again, it's leveraging, you know, great talent, right? But um, anyway, so um, we'll, we'll touch on that in a sec, but uh, to answer David's question, it literally was like almost overnight, right? We, we had to go from these events where it was like kind of our bread and butter. That was our focus from a marketing standpoint to going to webinars. And so we had to go to these webinars. Well, thankful we have like great, you know, sales leadership. So our sales, uh, our sales directors, they were kind of all over meeting with clients at that time like before, you know, it got unsafe to meet with clients and they were kind of finding out what was top of mind and just, you know, and then having uh, conference calls with clients as COVID started to, you know, expand throughout the U.S. and understanding what clients were doing and, and understanding like, um, for example, clients, you know, were all trying to go remote. Well, a lot of organizations weren't built to go remote and they were horror stories about people trying to log in and get uh, by Zoom. We actually heard from one client that Zoom told them at one point that they couldn't help them because they were just, they had such an influx of, you know, new accounts popping up. And so again, how do you, how do you market? So we, we went back to webinars, which we did not do at all. And so my team and uh, this uh, young lady, Zoe Taylor is a rock star on our team. She's a video, our video producer. She literally almost overnight learned how to run a Zoom webinar. And she was just taking all these tutorials. And the next thing you know, we started pushing out webinars, but they were targeted webinars, right? Because we had been working with our sales leadership to understand from, again, our clients, what was top of mind? What was that need, right? And understanding, of course, one of those was handling that remote workforce, right? Like, because they, again, they, some of those people were taking P, physical PCs home, right? 
and trying to plug an yeah. Ethernet cable into that thing, right? And then making sure they have bandwidth. And so there was a you know a ton of different needs from a networking standpoint. There were needs from a collaboration standpoint, whether it was uh, you know uh, WebEx teams, Microsoft teams, Zoom, whatever you know Slack, whatever the the technology they were trying to use. There was needs there, right, for for help because they hadn't been using these things, and all of a sudden they're running out purchasing them, so purchasing them so they can go virtually. So again, it was that tight alignment that we have with the sales organization. Again, I'm very thankful that the sales team was, you know, again they were burning the midnight oil, doing what they could to have webinars with clients to understand the pain points that they were going through as they were making that transition to the new, you know, COVID, um, you know, social distancing world. And I, I felt like we were all over that. And again, that's why we had to launch the webinars and they were very successful, you know, immediately. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, you got any, uh, uh, and I think that answered David's question uh, for sure. And anybody out there um, that's with us, again, feel free to drop in the uh, question in the Q&A box down at the bottom and uh, we'll get it on air here. Uh, have you got anything for them as well? I can't hear you, Javi. Hey, you mentioned that you were a CCNA certified. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, by the way, I I had seven books and I took that exam and I felt miserably. So, that's <laughs> off to you. Um, yeah, that's uh, I mean, amazing. Um, what I was going to circle back to is. Based on your history, you know, Bell South, Singular, AT&T, you know, iVision. Um, I know that I mentioned when I, the short time that I was working on the IT and, and network side, um, as a sales engineer, I had to keep salespeople honest, right? You go in there, you do technical right. validations and you say, uh, yeah, that actually doesn't really do that. Let me make sure that I'm being, you know, here the, uh, the advocate for the customer. What's the craziest thing? that you've ever had to deal with where you walked in the room and you were like, come on, man, like this is like, you know, there's no way that we can make this work or a situation that you were able to uh, resolve by, I don't know, by being honest and transparent. Great, great question. So of course that never happens with salespeople, right? Then you never go anywhere and they oversell something, right? So I, um, again, you know, with, with uh, AT&T and Bell South, solution specialist position and it was uh i dealt more with like internet products connectivity but it was a little more than network it was at security uh ipsec things in there there was a little more technical than just your traditional network and um i was working with a, a famous uh uh retail jewelry store and um the i walk in day one and i get told by the ae that this is the solution that they propose and so started doing my research. And um, to be honest, I was trying to ramp up on the product still that they had proposed. So doing that, ramping up on the product, ramp it up on what they had already like pitched to this client. And I realized that this client has to do a major like forklift upgrade of their software to be able to buy this solution from us. Well, I go and tell the team. But they didn't know that. Uh, they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't know that they had to do that upgrade. Basically, had just bought the solution and didn't know that it was going to require all that additional work. Right. No, they had no the the client had no clue that that was part of it. Right. They thought that they could just walk in, buy the solution, and it would be a done deal. And so we um, so I had to you know tell again. I brought my manager in, brought the sales uh, person's manager in. We're sitting there talking, and it's like this solution is not viable unless they do this major upgrade that's gonna cost millions of dollars, right? It's gonna cost just as much as this solution we're proposing. So double the budget, right? And so they're like, well, too late, that ship has sailed, we have gotta pitch this anyway. So I go, take the trip, go see the client and sit um, 45 minutes or so get towards the end, delicately say, hey, listen, for all this to happen, this is great, and we can get you all this, but you gotta have to do this upgrade first, right? And so 
the CIO basically looked at me and was like, um, so you wasted my 45 minutes of my time. <laughs> I was like, what? And so the room got quiet. He got up. He walked out, you know, said, thanks for coming or whatever, walked out. And my head, you know, just starting a new position, my head drops, you know, I walk out. I'm thinking, all right, I'm just starting this position. I'm about to get fired right on day two, or, you know, week one or week two. And I go out and then uh, when I go out, the IT director who was in there comes over and thanks me. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, he's like, thank you. He goes, you did exactly what I needed you to do. He goes, you know, your honesty. He's like, you told, you know, you were honest with him. You didn't try to sell us something that wasn't going to work, you know, right off the shelf that we needed to, you know, do this upgrade first. And he's like, you're, you're not, not going to get the deal today, but he goes, you know, you're going to get this deal because of your honesty, but it'll take a little time to get the deal. So, you know, I, I felt a lot better than, <laughs> than right there um, with that CIO. So I was good to hear. You got the deal uh, yeah, yeah, we did. We did. Awesome. That's a yeah. great story. About six months later, we get, we got the deal because everybody had been telling him he needed that upgrade. But again, that they were trying to be a little sly about it, not directly and honestly yeah. about it. So once he exhausted his resources, he realized, um, you know, that he he needed to make that upgrade again. You know, you you typically when you're you know when you're partnering with clients, you have two types, right? When the successful CIO is going to be that person that's willing to pay a premium dollar for a great service, right? Where he knows you're gonna come in and allow you to be a partner with them and help them grow their business. And then you have another type of CIO, and it's not saying they're bad, but it's just another type of CIO that typically it, I, you find to be more challenging because they're looking more at dollars, right? They're looking more at budget. And you try to help them explain that sometimes, you know, the best solution isn't always gonna be the cheapest. And you got to watch a lot of times. A lot of times when you go for the cheaper solution, you know, because there's usually gotchas behind that, right? Like, yeah. it, and, and again, you could be, especially in today's time, right? It can link the lead to you being exposed from a security standpoint, right? And, yeah. Yeah. And, and what's what's that costing business nowadays, right? A million dollar tech IT solution ends up costing you several million dollars, you know, to fix that security issue that was, you know, minimal had you just you know, bought a better premium product from the get-go. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Right. Um, I don't see any other questions, but I have two. <laughs> Am I allowed to ask more questions, Hoff? You can. <laughs> We're running on time, so... Uh, All right. These, yeah. these will be really quick. Right. I promise. So, Mark, you are, you are leading marketing, and we dove right into your approach and everything, but let's take, let's, let's back way up and give who is iVision, what do you do, and who's your perfect customer? Oh, wow. Uh, you got me thinking now, Paul. So uh, <laughs> iVision, <laughs> so uh, iVision, we're a full service um, IT um, technology shop. And basically, what that is, is, is we sit down with clients, take a thoughtful approach, and we start from a strategy and assessment or roadmap, then we'll go in and we'll add products as needed, where that's where partners, great partners like Cisco, you know, NetApp, VMware, Microsoft, that's where they, you know, Amazon, Equinix, those partners all come into play there, right? And then you have your, you know, your consulting team will install it. And then, you know, we have our managed services team that can manage it going forward. And what really, really differentiates us from our competitors is you'll find that we're probably, I'd say competitors have a lot less consultants and engineers. We're, we're probably 70 to 75% consultants and engineers as far as our company makeup, right? right. And I mean, we, we again, we're, we're thoughtful with our approach again, and we're looking at, when you talk about what makes that perfect client, we're looking for that client um, to steal kind of Gabe's words, our CEO, he, he, he says, you know, there's dating and then there's marrying, right? And so he's like, you have your, your, date, your client that you date, which is kind of not transactional, but it's a lot less of a relationship, right? And then you have your marriage, right, where you're entrenched in that and you understand not only their IT needs, you understand their business needs. So a perfect client for us is that client that allows us to, you know, 
partner with them again earn earn that partner you know we want to make sure we earn it and then come in and earn that partnership and then again they're full full service client where we're doing managed service for them and we're allowing them you know us to take the mundane tasks right us to do the backups for them us to do the patching the simple stuff hobby we were just talking about um again patching is so critical right and you know and not everyone's doing it and if you look at a lot of these big major hacks that happened recently right it's because of patching it's a simple task to do no one really wants to do it allow us to do tasks like this and and serve you know come in and help you and help let your team your it team focus on the business goals you know for the company right because if you do this right, we have helped several companies turn IT into a revenue generating, you know, department within the organization, right? Mm. And that's huge, right? Because most look at IT as like a cost expense. But when you can come in and you can, again, help a, help a client and, again, turn IT into a revenue, you know, generating business unit, that's huge, right? And, again, it's yeah. earning, you know, what we say one of our client engagement values, earning clients for life every day, right? So again, that's the, to me, that's the approach and that's the clients that we're looking for. That should be oh, every sure. approach. Oh, sure. All companies should be really thinking about how to deal with clients that way, right? It's a it's a long long term partnership. It's it really is marriage, right? It's not a you don't go in and do a small job and say thanks for your money, peace out. It really is <laughs> exactly. We have to figure exactly. out. You know, especially in our business, right? Because technology is evolving on a daily basis. There is no complacency. There is no, I'm going to sit back and watch that solution rot away for 10 years and then I'm going to come back. You have to be completely immersed and involved every step of the way to evolve with them. So that's that's really awesome. And, and I think that you're obviously doing the right thing uh, with the proven success. But yeah, that's great. Yeah. So one last question. This is a, uh, the, the last one and I am totally done. <laughs> All right, so the show is speed bumps for a reason, right? We're talking about challenges. Um, I, it, being in IT, I have to imagine um, things move so fast. What are, what are some trends or, or, or challenges and trends that can help those challenges that you're seeing kind of around the corner? Is there anything top of mind for you right now? Yes. So um, I think in, in to, to answer that, I, I'll take a, take a step back, right? I feel like part of, you know, again, you're right. You're so right about marketing and IT. We first, when I first came on board, you know, I vision, again, it was very basic. Our website, you know, Gabe's an engineer. Our website was written like an engineer, right? So it was kind of hard to understand. And so we've evolved. We've come a long way. And, and again, and part of that is due to Gabe. Gabe, even though he is an engineer at heart, he still is a great marketing person. And I think that, um, again, it's, it's to your point, it's taking that journey and understanding like the, the speed bumps, right? Like, why aren't we selling this product? Why, you know, can't we penetrate this market? We're trying to penetrate this market. And, you know, again, throughout my tenure at Ivis, there's been hiccups. Like we, a service that we have, it's a backup and DR as a service. When we first rolled it out, we weren't selling it right, right? We were targeting the wrong audience. And so I think a lot of times it's those lessons learned, right? Where you got to figure that out. You know, now it's a significant part of our business. It is because we figured it out. We figured out how to position it, how to sell it, right? Same thing with managed services. It's a huge part of our business now. And we had to figure that out, you know, and, and part of how you do that Again, is any good manager worth their salt? You're going to surround yourself with great people, great talent. So, you know, one of our, our mutual friends, uh, Jason France, like, so we, you know, the company he was working at, we, you know, partnered with them. And actually, I worked with France and he helped confirm that, hey, you're not crazy. This is how you, you need to be marketing, right? Like, this is like- Jason they, Jason, Jason uh, does that to me all the time. He's like, hey, except he does the opposite. He's like, hey, you are crazy, so. <laughs> so, you know, he's like, he's like, hey, you're not crazy. We talk to your clients, you know, and again, one of our things is, was like, we were, we would try to do like net new marketing and it was a struggle just doing plain net new marketing on its own. We found like leveraging our existing partnerships, 
you know, in using our CA, CIO. So we do these video case studies. And, you know, again, Prince was like, that's genius. Like you guys are doing these, most people are still doing paper case studies. You guys are doing video case studies. Leverage that, you know. And so we started leveraging those and marketing those. And I think when you get to like today in, you know, some of the, I feel like some of the challenges you have, we're having, it's how do you, again, you know, it goes back to Hogan, David Hogan's question, right? How do you market in this world, right? Where now, you know, we're doing well. We're seeing that there's webinar fatigue, right? Because everybody's doing webinars. We were quick to the game, but everybody, right. <laughs> everybody joined us. So what do you, <laughs> so like, what do you, what do you do? What's next, right? So I feel like, you know, part of what we're doing, you know, we're surveying clients and I, and I think it, to me, to sum it up, you can't do this alone. Anybody who thinks that they have this secret marketing recipe that doesn't include clients, I think it's crazy because you got to include feedback from clients. So we are continuously reaching out to existing clients and then potential clients through surveys, things like that, understanding what's top of mind for them, understanding, you know, the business goals that they're trying to achieve for, for 2000, you know, rest of 20 and for 21. And again, I feel like some of that, when you ask me about specific things, some of it is that remote workforce. These, a lot of it is patched together today, right? Because they thought this was a temporary fix. There would probably be weeks instead of months, right? Where we're at now. So I feel like it's helping people with security around that, right? One is making sure these collaboration platforms are set up correctly because that's an issue in a lot of places. So it's marketing okay. people, letting them know we're here to help them because, hey, we know you're using you know, Microsoft Teams or Cisco WebEx, whatever, but it's installed correctly, you know, it could be installed incorrectly. Here's some things you need to be looking at, right? Here's some things you need to be concerned about. If all these look good, then you're good, right? But if not, then you probably want to reach out to a firm like us so, so we can help you out. And, the, and security, I can't stress security enough. Like that's, that's the one where it's, it's unfortunate, but during this pandemic, people are trying to take advantage of, of companies every day you know, and, you know, through security issues, phishing or, you know, trying to hack in because something hasn't been patched or something like that. Great, great stuff. Uh, you yeah. got anything else? I think I've asked as many questions as no, I no, could. This, this, these are really great questions, right? I think that we started off and we didn't do a good job of uh, talking about what iVision does and what your actual role was there. So thanks for actually bringing that up, Paul. Yeah. Um, you know, really quick before we start to work our way out, we're like right at the hour. Um, do you want to give a quick shout out to anybody who helped inspire you, who gave you any like like real pushes, inspiration uh, in early in your career or even today? I know you talked about the folks, uh, the founders of iVision a lot. They sound like fantastic folks. Anybody else along those lines? Yes, thanks. Uh, appreciate that, Javi. So again, I, I was nowhere near as polished as Jennifer. Like I felt like in, in high school, you know, she had her act together. So uh, again, you know, there's there was a buddy of mine named Mike. He's the one that introduced me at Bell South and kind of saw the salesperson in me. There was a manager I had, Jennifer Westbrook. She saw the potential, like the technical uh, side of me, I guess, and, and got me on my way. Um, there was, uh, I, I would really you know, be remiss if I didn't mention, um, there's a couple of ladies or three ladies actually that really helped me in my career. Uh, Carla French, uh, Vicki Dove, uh, Lisa Wittenberg, they literally just saw the potential in me and believed in me and allowed me, I would have never had the opportunity. And again, if you go look at, you know, LinkedIn or whatever, you look at my resume, you see all those job changes were promotions and they, you know, were the ones who believed in me and allowed me to believe in myself and drive myself to achieve all those, you know, promotions. And then I feel like now, again, you know, I've already mentioned uh, Gabe and David and uh, Gabe Damiani and David Deggett, two amazing guys. Uh, like, Gabe is that guy, <clears throat> excuse me, that it's a, he'll come in, he'll blow something up and make it beautiful, right? He's just so strategic great marketing guy. And I learned from a marketing strategy standpoint, I learned so much from Gabe, you know, through these eight and a half years. And then David is just the ultimate salesperson, right? And these guys are like, are constantly throwing books at me, constantly challenging me. And 
and it's the flexibility within my job, like, you know, the product management, the marketing aspect, the business development. I get to do so many things here and grow, you know, as my career and as a person. And again, those guys have a lot to do with it. So there's, there's a lot of other people to do. I have in my network, but I know we're at times. So I'll cut it short. No, no, that's <laughs> That's awesome, man. I, you know, we, we like to give credit where credit is due. You know, Paul and I have both had people in our life that have pushed us, believed in us, and, and gotten us to where we are in our careers, man. So we always like to give that love back. Right. So, uh, that's amazing. But, Mark, man, once again, awesome having you on. You have such an incredible story. I love to hear that transition. We didn't even go too deep into your, your uh, chemical and chemistry background, man, which is <laughs> fascinating. But you know, you went from that to uh, technology, to sales, to marketing, to product. And anybody who looks at your LinkedIn will see this is a person that is resilient. This is somebody who is not okay with complacency, man. And you're just curious and a learner. So thank you once again for joining us. This is an yes, awesome episode. Um, I love to hear these types of stories. And uh, for all of you that are still with us, um, you know, we're going to put this up on YouTube. Once uh, Kelly adjusts it, it makes uh, me and Paul look prettier. And uh, we'll uh, put it out there for the world to see. So uh, once you do see that, we'll let everybody know. And please do share it on uh, your networks. Um, Paul, who do we have with us next week? Absolutely. I'm, I'm excited and I'm actually getting hungry um, with it being lunchtime. It's actually a perfect gas for this. Um, I don't know how we can get chicken, fried chicken to us uh, virtually, but I think I'm going to have to make a run. Uh, we're going to be joined next week by Alan McGee. Everybody knows Alan. Uh, he is VP of Digital Marketing and Technology. So, Mark, you're going to want to be involved in this one, too, <laughs> um, over at Church's Chicken. And you go, technology and chicken. I'm like, yep, that's actually a thing. And after talking to Alan, man, he's got, he has got some incredible things happening. He's on, a, I think, year one of a three-year digital kind of transformation roadmap, uh, driving innovation in the QSR space. Um, he's also been recognized as brand innovators, 40, top 40 under 40 last year, leading all consumer-facing digital platforms uh, over at churches. He's got experience with Moe's, IHG, Arby's, and he's also kicked Jason, Butt's, uh, Jason Prance's butt at the UGA Digital Marketing Student Competition two years in a row. So uh, it is going to be a pretty incredible conversation, just like this one. Uh, so hope everybody comes back uh, and registers and uh, brings their church's chicken with them. So, I'll have mine. Uh, so that's Alan next week. I also want to make sure uh, if all, all of our guests now, you're going to receive a survey. Tell us what you think. We're always looking to improve. Can't, I can't guarantee we can have a uh, chicken delivered to you next week, but we'll try. So that's all I got. Thanks, everybody. Mark, you are the man. Have a great week. Thanks, weekend. guys. All right. Awesome. I enjoyed it. Have a great weekend. Yeah, you as well. Everyone.